it's Miriam. Hey, Miriam. Hey. Hang there for a second. We're just gonna leave and come and pick you up. Okay, I'm just waiting here then. So I just arrived at Xiahe. start the girls camp. camp is over. The girls have been drawing, they learned the basics in drawing and then they've been painting and learning some English and then we made some banana cake. Even I painted a little today.
morning. The sun is up and I'm going to go up to a little hill here and get a better look at the monastery. I'm on the hill now. You can see the monastery here. It's already Friday today, which means that there are only two days left, two and a half days left of this girls' camp, which feels strange. Time has really flown by quickly. Um, I think all of them are nomad girls, or at least the majority of them are nomad girls, uh, and they're expected to marry young. They're not expected to follow their dreams, you know. They all want to become artists. They're all painters and they're really good. I'm terrible at painting and drawing, but they are, like, the drawings and the paintings I've seen are absolutely fantastic. Um, so it's kind of... So, I mean, it's inspiring to see what they have created, but it also breaks my heart a little bit because I know they might not be able to continue this and it's so different like our lives are very different the expectations people have on us are very different um, one other girl is graduating this summer they're hoping that they can send her away for an exchange like an art exchange to another place but then she believes and everybody else believes that it's next to impossible to find a husband that would support her in what she's doing, like support the art. So after that exchange she might get married and then stop painting. I mean maybe she'll paint in her spare time but it won't be, you know, what she does. She'll basically be a wife and a mother and that will be her responsibilities. And it's quite tough, it's a lot of pressure, a lot of a huge workload for Tibetan women especially in nomad families um, so she might not have any time to paint and to follow her passion and that is so unfair what we've been doing at the camp is a lot of arts and crafts they're learning like the basics of drawing like shadowing and then now they're drawing faces so they're practicing drawing eyes and mouths and noses um, and then adding the shadows to that and then they are doing a lot of crafts, made little... These ones, one of the students gave to me. Um, so they are doing that and then they're learning some English. And we've watched a few movies. We watched Brave and then we watched Whale Rider. Whale Rider is about this little Maori girl um, who breaks all the stereotypes. Um, she's very cool. Cool little girl. It's a nice movie. Recommended. <laughs> but anyways, that's what we've been doing and yesterday evening there was a nun from one of the nunneries here who came over and told the girls about her life story basically. She didn't go to school at 16. She left. Um, she went abroad by herself and then she, you know, she's been traveling and she's been studying Buddhism. Um, really hard and now she's back here again in Labra um, and I think it was very inspiring both for them and for me too to listen to her she was talking a lot about finding your purpose and choosing a path for yourself and not follow everybody else's advice or expectations um, she basically said that if you imagine that you have five paths you can choose between and you keep starting on each path. You walk a little bit and they say, ah, oh, no, this was not for me. And then you try another one, ah, oh, no, this was not for me either. And eventually you have started all paths, but you'll never have finished a single one. Um, which is kind of my life story <laughs> so far. Yeah, it was just inspiring to listen to. And she's a very brave and confident woman. Um, 
so I'm hoping I can come back here many times again and speak to her and to the girls and everything. It's been a really great experience.